Hi, this is Robert at XI Computer. Today we're gonna look at our XI M Tower 2P64X. It's a workstation based on a dual processor Xeon Intel. And uh, we um, also include this time two Xeon Phi coprocessors. Let's see how we did uh, this uh, uh, build. We're using a standard uh, super micro tower case. Uh, that can be uh, populated with different kind of power supplies and uh, different kind of um, um, base and motherboard accordingly to the to the need for the build. Um, it's a tower case, but it can also be configured as a 4U rack mount, removing those uh, footing and the top and uh, mounting sliding rails on each side. He has a lockable uh, front panel. And uh, when we remove, uh, we open up, uh, you, we, se we can see there, there are eight three and a half uh, hot swappable trays, an extra three and a half bay for, um, you know, a card reader or other accessories, uh, and then uh, two five and a quarter empty slot. And in this case, we also have an extra five and a quarter with a DVD read write. Um, there are two USB ports uh, that are available even when the um, the case is locked. Uh, behind that here, we have those um, eight trays, and we configured uh, those uh, four in a SAS connection and four in a SATA connection. They can all be SATA or SAS accordingly to the needs. Um, Supermicro put a four eight centimeter fan, and they basically have a, a full line uh, driving air from the, the front of the case down to the back with great ventilation. Um, the two CPUs here at Xeon are, of course, equipped with a nice high performance uh, uh, heat sinks uh, with active um, 8 centimeter fan. We have two more fans in the back here, and then uh, the two Xeon Fees, um, they are uh, the 5110P model. P stands for passive. They need uh, a good airflow um, going through them especially when they are in, into the heavy computational task. For that reason, uh, there is an extra fan kit that is mounted outside and directly suck the air from the two slots uh, that they take and improving the airflow. The noise is relatively uh, contained at the present, as, as we are showing this, because the unit is actually idling. Um, when we increase the computational load uh, on the CPU as well on the Xeon fee, the, the fans will start spinning higher and the, the noise level will be rel relatively higher. Um, the two CPUs uh, in, uh, in this build are Xeon E5-2670. Um, they are 2.6 gigahertz uh, standard clock speed and they have a turbo boost uh, um, feature uh, that will uh, boost to one core up to 3.3 uh, uh, gigahertz. They have 20 megabytes of cache each, eight cores. Now, eight cores with uh, hyperthread, that means they present to the software we're going to see uh, in a minute as uh, 16 cores each. So you have 32 cores total for the uh, standard Xeon CPUs. We populated this build with uh, 64 gig of 1600 register ECC RAM. We can easily go to 128 on this motherboard. And then the two Xeon fee, here they are. Each one of them has a 60 cores, and um, the, each one of them has eight uh, gigabyte of uh, graphics DDR RAM uh, EC, in ECC mode. So the whole, the whole system is error correcting uh, uh, memory um, equipped. Um, this particular build uh, we also equip with a uh, EVGA GTX 652 gig. It's a rel relatively powerful graphic card, so this will be probably used for real-time simulation and visualization in real time, uh, supported by a very, very high computational power. Um, and um, we can take a look uh, on the operating system and uh, the details of each of those um, uh, cores and CPU in a minute. Before looking at the OS, uh, we take a moment to take a look at the back of the case. And the uh, first thing that uh, comes to notice is the power supply. Power supply is a dual redundant, uh, quite uh, small uh, and very, very powerful. Each one of the two units boosts at 1,620 watt, high efficiency. 
and uh, it will allow this build um, to be populated with up to four Xeon fees. Uh, we, we might have ne need a, a different a motherboard and still maybe giving a, maybe a lesser performance video card. Um, I was talking about this venti extra ventilation kit required for those Xeon fees that are passive, as you can see here. This is mounted externally. In case we had to use four Xeon fees, we'll have another uh, kit mounted just down below. And uh, here on the screen, uh, we can see uh, the operating system of choice for this build is a uh, Red Hat Enterprise Workstation Linux kernel version 2.632. And um, you can see here 65,948 megabyte of RAM, 65,948 megabyte of RAM, uh, also known as 64 gig. Uh, and then we see the, uh, the two Xeon P processors. And, uh, and each one of them has a total active number of cores, 60. And uh, they run at around one, one volt. And uh, they have a frequency of 1.05253 uh, gigahertz. So they're not running super fast compared to the main CPUs, but you have 60 cores per unit. So you have a, a lot of computational power. Here's the, the, the second device, so we see both of them, and both are running at the same speed and have 7.93 um, gigabyte of uh, actual RAM. Uh, a little bit of RAM is hidden for system uh, management. Um, in addition to that, the standard CPUs are shown as two CPU, eight cores per CPU, uh, with the multi, with the hyper thread is 16 cores, and then, uh, so the uh, software here show as processor. So this is processor number 31. And then we go up to processor number zero. So a total of 32 processor. And um, they are at 2.6 gigahertz and the turbo boost manage the, the, the clock speed of one, one core up to 3.3. And then the other one can go up and down accordingly to power management and, um, and uh, computational demand. And here we can see now pretty much uh, the system is idling and uh, we can see all the CPUs, quote unquote, CPU cores, whatever the, the, the software identifies them from CPU, uh, in this case, 32. So in this case, you start counting by one, not by zero. And uh, we can see the graph of uh, the CPU performance utilization. Uh, well, you, can, you guys can find more details about this build on our website at xicomputer.com, and I appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much.